Damn that, Wataru. It was already getting late when I checked the time on my phone. After that, Wataru and the guys interrogated me about Ot Man. I was finally free just a little bit ago. Ugh. As soon as I left the school's entrance way, the temperature suddenly plummeted. The cold wind blew on me and I huddled up. And then I said, and yet, skippy skip skip. Just peg it home! Peg it home! Screw you, you may! Your route isn't this route! <laughs> it's like, why? Well, I thought it was gonna be my route. It was originally going to be your route, but change of plans, you see. There's more plot involved in Hot May's route, which would make your route make more sense if we clear this one first. So we're going through this one first, so therefore we will ignore you. Even if you do glare at us a million times, which you have yet to do once, but you will eventually. All in due time. There's gotta be a glare in this. I remember at least one glare in this scene. Maybe my memory isn't that great, but I do remember a glare. A scene where there is no glare from Yume is not a Yume scene at all. The scene is not yet completed. There is still potential for glare. Come on, glare. It's not like trying to get the scene out of the way, I'm just waiting for that damn glare. I think she glares at some point in this scene right here. She'll turn around any sec now and glare. Any second now. Any second now. There'll be a glare. Just you watch. Just you wait. It'll be a glare. Slam! Come on, it's gonna be a glare. It's not glary enough. There it is! You have a mighty glare on your face. It's your imagination. We headed home as we talked and glared. Ah, uh, here you are. The smell of something good wafted from the simming bot. Timbering bot. Needs more glare. Here's some soy sauce. But may added a little soy sauce to the pot to adjust the taste. She scooped a little sauce with a ladle to taste. She brought the ladle closer to my mouth. Don't say that. I took a sip of the broth. I tasted it tasted just the right amount of soy sauce and mirin mixed in the sauce. It tasted perfect. Yes, yeah, it's great. Otobe turn the stove off and smile. It looks great. I answered as I looked at the grill. Otobe and I were fixing dinner. This was nothing unusual for us. Otome's house was next door, so she actually came up, usually came over to my place, and we'd fix and eat dinner together. We'd spend some time together after dinner, and then she'd go home. Since I moved to the Yoshino residence half a year ago, this has been happening almost every day. I don't mind at all. Hey, Yume, get some plates ready. There was one more. I told Yume who was probably relaxing in the living room. She replied lazily. Yume sluggishly dragged herself to the kitchen. She was wearing a jersey shirt and glasses, aka a totally relaxed wardrobe. She looked so different from when she was at school. Otome fumbled with the edge of her apron while standing next to me. Why is she being bashful? 
邪魔してしまうのはいかがなものかとちょっと考えてしまうわけでして OK that's enough get some blades ready Not even what, like three minutes into the scene, and she's already glaring. Dinner was served on the plates you may put out cooked potatoes, grilled salmon, steamed rice, and miso soup. Oddly, some of it was shaped into eyes that looked like they were glaring at him. <laughs> Otone was still off in her own world. Oh, we're doing a pup show. Are there various types of puppet show? Free. What a rude sister she is. You know, I think I mentioned it before, but when we do get to Yume's route, I've got to remember, remind me at the end of this route, that when I get around to Yume's route after it, well, after the alternative ending as well, right after that, remind me to, like, make a counter for every time that Yume glares through her route, because it's gonna be quite a big number, I imagine. If it doesn't even reach a hundred, I will be surprised. What a rude sister she is. It bugs me that she knows my taste so well. And Zuenakane wanted to do it, actually. I thought it would be interesting, too. I think it'll be okay. They were saying they already have a plan for the script. I was told I won't have too many lines. But today I got excited and leaned forward. Yeah, yes. She leaned forward even more to be closer to me. Uh, well, uh, the main character, I guess. <laughs> That's such a thing to say. Uh, I don't really have many lines, but, uh, you know, I'm the main character, I guess. That's like almost a squall like reaction. Yeah, I'm like the main character and all. Whatever. I haven't seen the script yet, so I'm not really sure. I think they were saying it'd be a romantic story. She asked sharply. She wasn't interested at all until now. Spoilers! It's Harry Mo! No. Otne was staring directly at me. She wasn't even blinking, but that might have to do with the fact that it doesn't have blinking in this visual novel. I have actually seen visual novels where they actually do, and it's kind of it's kind of a neat feature to have it so that, you know, the eyes actually move. The air felt heavy. Uh Coco, maybe? I answered in the form of a question. <laughs> Don't put it that way! What is she saying? She's a student council president. How can we do anything sexual at an academy event? What does that supposed to mean? Claire number five! There's only just one rigging scene, more or less. Don't agree with her. You don't need to come to watch the show, okay? Not no smiled. I'm telling you, it won't be that fun. Uh, um... No! 
was already in, I won't hear any more of it mode. When not no gets like this, there's nothing that changes her mind. Sure, just for fun. You don't need to. Please just leave me alone. The Asakura sisters looked at each other and smiled. Those two sisters were ganging up on me. I continued to eat dinner quietly as the two talked and planned happily. Yume kept looking at me every once in a while mischievously, but now seemed to be truly looking forward to the performance. This is horrible. <sighs> Maybe I should have voted for a haunted house. I could only sigh. <sighs> I can stress that lately my bed is that I skipped a bit. Oh, wait. Who's that? I heard a knock on the door. Come in. Oh, it's just you. Skip. Hey, I'm a main character, you know. I, I, actually, I, I'm a very important character. But you'll never know why until, until a certain point. Because my purpose in all this is very important. But I will not tell you because that'd be big spoilers. By the way, I still have no idea what the hell goes on in the plot, honestly. I know those trees are important, I know Sakura is important, and for all I know, even Harimo might have an important role in all this. That'd be a surprise. Be like the dog ending of Silent Hill 2, just be like, It was you, Harimo! All along! It was you! Where are we going? I walked to Sakura's son, led me by the hand. I saw her golden hair in front of me. Her twin big tail swung as she walked. My stomach growled when I heard her mention food. For some reason I'm thinking of, uh, what was that one fairy tale called? One where the two kids are lured into a witch's house and she plans to eat them. Now that'd be a twist. She turned around and smiled. It was a trap! No, it was a very warm smile. Come on, enough joking. It highlighted her blue eyes. Um, well, uh... I remembered her name, but I couldn't say it because I was a little embarrassed. I didn't know if she knew what I was thinking or not from how she looked at me. Directly. That's why I looked away. It wasn't because I didn't like her looking at me, but I was just embarrassed. But my behavior disappointed Sakura-san and she looked sad. I messed up. I regretted it. I didn't want her to look sad. Her hand felt warm in mine. She rescued me when I was standing on my own in this cold weather. That was why... That was why I was trying to be brave. Sakura-san. I'm sure my face was beat red. I spoke very quietly. But... She showed a bright smile. She looked so happy. She rubbed my head. That made me feel even more embarrassed, but I didn't mind it. When I saw Sakura san being happy, it made me feel happy. It was as simple as that. Yep. I nodded in response to Sakura san, and this time I walked next to her. The howling wind was still cold. Our breaths were still white. However, I felt so warm inside as we walked to Cherry Blossom Tree Line Street. That had nothing to do with Otne at all, but just went through it anyway. I woke up pretty well. I sat up and I crawled back into the bed again. Just like, now that's, now that's more of a realistic approach, that. Wake up. Ugh. Back to sleep. Ugh. I turned on the heater with a remote controller. I heard warm air blow in from the heater unit as I skipped some dialogue. But I don't know how much. That much. 
Putney asked me as she locked the front door. Putney locked the Yoshino house's front door pretty often. It seemed rather strange, but it happened all the time. Ah. My lunch. No, not usually, but I want to take my lunch today. She said with a sigh. Yes, there is. Anything is possible as long as you don't give up. She showed me her watch. You can do it, Aunt Nay. Sure, because you're a good cook. Being a good cook doesn't mean you're a fast cook, though. Your homemade lunch will give me something to look forward to, and I'll be able to concentrate on my study. Listen, I'll concentrate at least three times more than usual. Rattle, rattle. Why are you unlocking the door? Her sleeves were already up, and she was ready to do it. But there isn't enough time, though. Then what was the whole point of that? Just like, oh, please make me lunch, and now that she's actually going to do it. It's just like, what are you doing? We're gonna be late. No way, that's impossible. Look at the time. We switched roles all of a sudden. I showed her my phone. Wait, our positions were switched. But Nay looked at my phone wistfully. You may reservedly spoke to us from just up ahead. We're coming! I walked quickly and caught up with her. But Nay caught up too. The three of us were side by side. Shall we go? The three of us were walking down the street to school as usual. No, I can't. I'm a man who lives by following his inspirations. My mood at the time determines these things. So do you. It's just like, that's the difference. I can be reckless, because in the end of the day, I get better score than you, there. I couldn't say anything, because she was telling the truth. By the way, how can she get good grades when she's always wasting her time lazily at home? She smiled provokingly. Fool, don't underestimate me, okay? I just didn't study, that's all. I usually pretend to be studying during an exam period, but I actually play RPGs that I beat ages ago. Also, I read a complete set of my favorite manga. If I had studied earnestly, I would be getting the best grades in the academy. Shit. I forgot Nutney was here. Glare number six. Why am I even counting it? I said I'd save that for her route, not this one. Ah, uh, well, I mean. She came closer to me. No, I didn't mean to deceive you, really. Her face was smiling, but her eyes weren't. How do you know if anyone's eyes are smiling, though? Botney's right hand on my shoulder terrified me greatly. Yes, I'd be glad to. That was all I could say. You may mutter warily next to me. I turned around when I heard voices from behind me. There were Anzu and Akane. They must have just gotten off the bus. They joined us and greeted Otne and Yume. Hi, mm, what's this? Naiho. 
シーくんとココちゃんがラブシーン満載のねすごいよ She grinned. Hey, I wish you'd stop saying stuff like that. My sisters don't appreciate those kind of jokes. One was smiling and the other was keeping a straight face, but I could tell she had murderous intentions in her head. If I were in Yoshiki's position, I would have been dead a long time ago then. <laughs> Making too many dirty jokes, you guy. Ah. Uh, I'm a regular at the hospital, why is that? My sister is in a kind of rage state whenever I tell a dirty joke, and I just can't help it. I just say one dirty joke, and then suddenly I have a frying pan to the face. Forcefully, I might add. Next thing you know, I wake up in a hospital bed. Of course, she was thinking about me. Enzo and Akane walked briskly and went ahead of us. I was left alone. They took the script away from me. Don't make them state them seriously, they were just joking. They, con they continue to read the script very carefully. She gave me back the script. But they looked happy. You may seem to be having so much fun. <sighs> you might throw in a bit of improv now. He's like, I'll throw in an insult directed at you, you may, while being in character in a very subtle way. Well, I don't know how he do that, but whatever. while I walked along with them, I flipped through the pages of the script and passed, as we passed through the school gates. And that has absolutely everything to do with global warming. Is that correct, sir? Hopeless! If I had to give a report like this, I wonder how it would go. I'd probably be able to write it and it'd actually be pretty decent, but then when it comes to actually reading out loud, it'd be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, awkward. Wait for it! Okay, well, another glare! That was a long glare. Are we gonna get a glare from Minatsu as well? Minatsu, I can't see your face! Glare! There must be a glare! There's a good glare, sort of. Or a surprise face and a look of disgust as well. You know, imagine finding every character's glare looking kind of face and just like putting them all on the screen with that expression. Another glare! How many times does she glare? I mean, holy crap! Yes. I wonder if anyone's ever told Minato that she has a pillow on her head and she'll be like, This isn't a pillow! Hey, what is it really? Is it actually some kind of hat? And what type of hat would it be? Because it really does look like she just put a pillow on her head. Like a cushion kind of one. Yeah, yeah, 
yada 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 robot or robot. I'd say you don't have anywhere else to go, so I guess I'll go home. It was an exhausting day because of Amakaze. And these like these are uh, the best thing to do is just go home. La la la. Oh wait, no, that's Nanaka's voice, isn't it? Not mine. But well, we've already gone through that, so la 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 back at you, skippy skip. <laughs> you got to finish that at least. I would press the skip button, but usually when I do that, it skips too far. Ain't got all day. Okay, fine. Oh. Just in case. Skip, 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 skip. Panty shot out the window. Crash. Its face was buried in cleavage that we didn't see because I'm surprised it didn't have a CG for that, honestly. Fell out of a building. Huh? Uh, nothing. I didn't do anything that you should be concerned about. Well, aside from falling out of a window. She looked at me suspiciously. Yume, who was eating dinner quietly, looked at me the same way. What a pair of sisters. I really mean it. Mr. Kosha Sensei asked me to do something. Shit! Why did she have to say that? Damn cats and their whole scrapping. Seriously. One of our cats is a serious troll, man. Like, he'll literally just charge and run after the other cats. He's just like, leave me alone, you little shit. And be like, let's play. And like, oh, piss off. I'm too old for this crap. How many times has she glared in this recording on its own? Because I stopped counting now, haven't I? I could feel a pair of them putting pressure on me with their words. Another glare. Well, that's because I couldn't tell them. I was the one responsible for making sure that nobody found out about it. I was under a lot of pressure here. I didn't think I could keep this from them. I had to think really hard. I had to come up with an idea to get out of this situation. I made every call in my brain, every cell in my brain work. Well, she is, uh, uh, she's actually, you know, uh, she's actually, uh, she's my sister separated at birth, you know. We were separated at birth, and my little sister finally found me and wanted me to take care of her. Judging by that glare, it wasn't very convincing. That's not working! Thanks for the completely unsurprised monotone. Well, there wasn't any kind of answer that would make any sense to them. I mean, even if we told them the truth, they'd be like, Get out of here, that's the lamest excuse I've ever heard. It surprised me too. Well, 
I didn't do that. Yeah, why wouldn't they trust me? After a while... As we talked, we heard Sakura-san's voice from the entryway. She sat down and breathed a deep breath. Otne got up immediately. Otne prepared dinner while playing along with Sakura's act. The rest of girls are so attractive. Glare. Glare everywhere. Nothing. It's not like I can, you know, not glare in a single scene at least once. She looked away while pouting. She knew what I was thinking. I mean, that glare is totally unrivaled by any other character. Sakura san said it with a smile. Otna came back from the kitchen with reheated food in her hand. Not at all. Our three voices overlap. That's not true. Indeed, I'd have even for a practicing at home. They knew I was lying. Jesus Christ, you made how many glares? I can't take it anymore. Once this scene is over, I'm calling recording. I've been glared at one too many times, you may. For one day. Wow. I didn't know about that. You may act knowledgeably. I felt remorseful. Hmm. Did you just notice I've known that for the longest time? It's all beyond purpose. I spoke while being extremely careful not to move my nose. She looked at me with pity. Sakura son laughed. I ran back to my room and vowed to myself that I was going to practice how to lie in front of the mirror every day. Which you completely forget instantly. Because we never hear that, do we? Let's see. I laid this down on the bed and said, screw this shit. And... Banana mean. And... Flashback. And lights out. And sleep. And dream. Humans are creatures that dream. Different from others. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. How do you know? They want to be special. They want to be adored by others. Just like the heroes in comics and games. Achieving great things with unique powers. Of course, no one believes deep down that it could ever happen. Everyone knows there's no magic in this world. But every night before I sleep, I close my eyes and imagine myself flying free up in the sky, moving too fast for any eye to see, firing lasers from the palm of my hands, rushing to the rescue of my damsel in distress, and of course our happy ending. A dream like that, 
Well, since it was a dream, anything was allowed, even all kinds of unreasonable developments. That's another thing I had in mind. Like, you know, in shonen kind of anime, manga, and all that, they always do that dramatic thing where someone like gets behind someone in a fight and they just like literally have a full-on conversation with them, and then just like you got all those lines all that indicate that it's going really fast. It's like how do they have time to do that. Then they counterattack and they dodge. Then they counterattack again, and then they have another conversation. Just like. This is supposed to be a fast-paced battle, but they're able to have a conversation? What's the... well... Th there is no logic in it, really. I mean, it's kind of... It's pointless to think of it in the logical way. I mean, they're usually fighting in the air. It's just like, how are they doing that? Has there ever been any indication that they can fly? Or, like, leap this high into the air to fight for, like, 20-30 seconds before getting to the ground? Why does this happen so often in anime? Even if half the world was destroyed, it wouldn't be back to normal the next day. After all, it's only a dream. The heroines were all girls from famous pop idol groups. Why? Furthermore, they were all there just for me. That kind of thing's allowed too. It never caused anyone else any problems anyways. <sighs> to be honest, it was troublesome for me. My power. I had the power to be shown other people's dreams. It was a strange ability I had, but I couldn't think of it as anything special. Actually, I didn't even want to be special like that. If anybody wanted to take this power away from me, I'd be happy to give it to them. Dreams are incoherent to begin with, especially when they're someone else's dreams. That makes them even harder to digest. So how long is this gonna last? The hero rescued the heroine and reached the climax in this uh, adventurous love romance with no explanation. However, it doesn't seem like it'll end anytime soon. There was a businessman being mobbed by a group of idol singer heroines and nobody knew exactly how many members were in the group because of the constant member changes. Wow, that's a bizarre scenario. What a happy face. Well, it's only a dream. With the exception of certain areas, we will continue our live dream broadcast. The announcement trailed by through my brain. I guess someone's dreaming over time since I'm seeing it in late night broadcast mode. The businessman was ready to get to it. That's what he wanted all this time, huh? Then the adventure story at the beginning was unnecessary. Gah. I let out a large yawn. No, like... Gah. This was the downside of being shown someone else's dreams. Not get enough sleep for the next day. This isn't worth it. It seemed to go on forever. Next day. I'm tired. So am I. Anyways, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.